A homeowners association gone rogue. Tonight, a developer controls the entire HOA board in one St. Charles County neighborhood, and homeowners there say their spending is questionable at best. I went to try to get them answers in a story you'll only see here on News 4. It's a nice community. There's lots of kids. Kids ride their bikes around the quiet streets. Neighbors lounge and laugh around the community pool. This Wentzville neighborhood certainly has its perks. I love this neighborhood. But some homeowners tell News 4 there's one serious downside. I feel abused, honestly, and used. We're being taken advantage of, and we have been this entire time. The Villages of Huntley Ridge isn't a new subdivision, but victim to the housing crisis and other starts and stops, it's not yet fully developed. That means whoever the developer is controls the homeowners association. In 2017, a company called Glarus LLC took over at the head P. David Glarner and his brother Robert B. Glarner Jr. Something obviously shady is going on. Ever since, some homeowners say they're increasingly unhappy. He came into a pretty well-funded HOA um, when he took over. And over the past four years, he spent over a quarter of a million dollars. Um, and a major, a good fraction of that is money that cannot be justified. The Glarner's name is one you might recognize. Both brothers were named in a federal subpoena in the investigation that ultimately took down former St. Louis County Executive Steve Stanger. The St. Louis County Council's Ethics Committee blasted the county's lease agreements at the Northwest Plaza in St. Anne, owned by the Glarners, especially because they had made hundreds of thousands of dollars in campaign donations to Stanger, but neither were ever criminally charged in the Stanger investigation. I'm not casting any stones. I didn't read into the case. I don't know what happened there. I don't really care. All I know is, is that as a citizen of Winsville and, and uh, you know, as a member of this HOA and this community, we're being ripped off. Without a single seat on the HOA board, currently comprised of the brothers and their mother, homeowners say they're at the mercy of the developer's spending. So I want to know where it's going. They pour over the financial documents, but they say stuff just doesn't add up. For example, Hush Blackwell, the same law firm that represented the Glarners during the Northwest Plaza problems, has been paid at high hourly rates for things like telephone calls and draft letters. That's more than 10 times the cost of what it should be. Sums of money also go to the developer's own companies, though homeowners say they don't know exactly what for. He seems to only get one bid for, for taking care of the pool, one bid for the lawn care, and it seems like at the end of the day, He'll write checks to his companies. And costs for common ground maintenance have soared, they say, to the tune of tens of thousands of dollars. Last year, we were paying 175 bucks a week or something for somebody to supposedly come out here and take out the trash. Well, I took out the trash every day. Emails and calls, they say, often go unreturned or when they do. He's literally told me on the phone, I don't give a blank about your pool. I could fill it in with cement for all I care. They're so concerned. I think he is paying his own bills with our HOA money. They've even filed a police report with Wentzville Police. I think that he thinks that he can get away with it. And honestly, from what we've seen, he might be able to. And that's not fair. This area of law is not as straightforward as as anyone would like it. Todd Billy is an attorney specializing in community association law. He says developers, of course, have interests in subdivisions early on. Build the quality home, sell it, move on. Great. We're happy about that too. But he says just like regular HOA boards, developers have a fiduciary duty to do the right thing. You cannot use the funds or the goodwill of that association for other means. It has to stay for the best interests of the association. With home building ticking up again in our area, he says when it comes to developer controlled HOAs, you have to read the fine print. Please read these things before you buy your home. And if your developer is not willing to share that or not willing to have the discussion about it, then you have to recognize and decide for yourself as to whether or not that community is for you because you're not just buying a home. You're, you're buying a relationship with all of your neighbors and the developer until they're gone. And he notes in Missouri, a developer can turn over control at any time. So there's no reason for you to hold on and get involved with fence requests and things of that nature. We are all fighting to just get a say in our home. And that's exactly what these homeowners say they want. All we want is simple. We want to control our finances and we want control of our HOA. 
We wanted to talk to the developer for this story. Instead, we were informed by the attorney they would only answer questions, quote, in writing rather than via an interview, saying they were, quote, not aware of any outstanding specific questions about how the finances are being handled, and writing that, quote, Following the sale of 50% of the lots in the full subdivision, homeowners will be elected by members of the HOA to the HOA board. He estimated that might be sometime next year. He also wrote that they, quote, unequivocally denied that HOA funds were used for anything other than HOA expenses, claiming bids were sought for common ground maintenance and saying, quote, the services of Hush Blackwell have been and will continue to be necessary, even more so, unfortunately, because of continual threats of legal action against the HOA. But when asked if the developer would turn over control now, the attorney told us, quote, it is important for the developer to be able to appoint board members to assist it with completion of development of the subdivision. None of us have ever seen him. How can you run a place that you've never seen? In the meantime, homeowners say they're considering other desperate measures, like a sign warning buyers away. Some have even just stopped paying their dues. Who's going to stop us? And I think that's where we're at at this point. That attorney from Hush Blackwell acknowledged that his calls and emails to me also would be billed to the HOA. It's certainly a complicated issue, and of course, we will continue to keep track on it. So, Lauren, couldn't the developer just turn over control if they wanted to? Yeah, that's certainly a big part of the issue here. By law, he certainly could, and he has promised to do so. He's promised to give up one seat on the board once a, a large component of the subdivision is finished, but that mm. can still be a long ways off, and really just one seat on the board for those homeowners might not make a big difference. In the meantime, this is getting the attention of some city officials out there as well, so more could develop on yeah. this, certainly. All right, certainly a messy situation.